The 24th annual McMinimins UFO Fest is descending on McMinnville May 17th and 18th. There will be live music, parades, costume balls, and contests. You can also hear expert speakers and first-person accounts of UFO encounters, including from former Navy pilot Ryan Graves, who last year came out very publicly about our military's regular UFO sightings. Do you remember that? That was super weird. Other guest speakers include Garrett M. Graff, author of really long titled books like The U.S. Government's 80-Year Quest to Understand the Mystery of UFOs, and Roderick Martin, host of the podcast High Strangeness. Tickets are available for believers and skeptics alike at ufofest.com. Happy 503 Day, everyone. Today on CityCast Portland, we're talking about some of the Portland Bureau of Transportation's planned Greenway additions, the upcoming federal reclassification of cannabis, and what it would mean to our local industry, and the participatory budgeting campaign currently gathering signatures for a November ballot initiative. Plus, we reveal our new unofficial but still official in our hearts city slogan. Joining me on this week's Friday News Roundup are Willamette Week's Potlander column author, Brianna Wheeler, and our very own executive producer, John Atariani. It's Friday, May 3rd. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. This is a very special 503 day edition of our Friday Roundup. If you don't know, it's a very real holiday where we celebrate all that is Portland. Uh, get it? May 3rd, 503, our area code. Anyhow, for all of our new listeners, today is a day we normally break down some of the biggest local stories of the week with some of the best and brightest journalists in town. But for today's show, as I hinted, we are doing something a little different. Today, we're celebrating ourselves as Portlanders and our beautiful city. So we wanted to focus on some of the good stuff that's been happening or is in the works. Mm -hmm. I do want to say uh, that we were hoping to play a happy 503 day message from our mayor, uh, but he ended up having no time to do it, even though his team said that he would. Mm -hmm. But like, what's more Portland than our mayor disappointing us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> we were actually just a little hurt. We're like, oh, he said he would. And then we're just like, oh, yeah, the PSU protest. Oh, he might yeah. be busy. <laughs> He's got a couple things on his hands yeah. this week. Yeah. <laughs> no worries, Mayor Wheeler. We're not mad. Yeah. We're just disappointed. <laughs> Anyhow, before we get into the news, I usually ask an opening question so you can get to know our guests a little better. And this week, my opening question is actually tied to a poll that our newsletter editor, Rachel Monahan, sent out to uh, her Hey Portland readers on what our new city slogan should be. Because we thought in honor of 503 Day, we could maybe, I don't know, come up with something better than the city that works. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really working for us anymore. <laughs> there were a bunch of choices. Here were like uh, the, I think it was like the top four choices were the city that tries, Ooh. the city that's working on it, yeah. the city that welcomes all. <laughs> mm -hmm. One of my favorite, unleash the beast, <laughs> breweries, environment, art, sustainability, or strip clubs, trails. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Yun. <laughs> Put that one in. It's so good. Any immediate favorites? I think I just told you mine <laughs> before I reveal the poll winner. I, I I do like Unleash the Beast. I like the city that's working on it and like mm -hmm. everything that that sort of entails, especially at this moment in Portland. I like that one too. Beast is amazing. That is real. That's poetic. That's poetry. That's art. Um, but I like the city that tries also. The city that tries. They'd yeah. be trying. I really like the city that welcomes all because I just thought that was, I'm like, we kind of do. Mm -hmm. um, but by 36%, it was a city that's working on it. Woo. So John, Aww. your pick. Yay. Yeah. Your, yeah. <laughs> yeah. John, John somehow won. Let's, let's clap for John. Yay. <laughs> so thank happy. you. I would like to thank uh, all the listeners of CityCast Portland, the readers of Hey Portland Newsletter, <laughs> Mayor Ted Wheeler, and uh, the Unipiper. <laughs> yes. Always the Unipiper. You probably don't know this at home because it's this is a seamless transition, but we actually had to stop because Brianna's mic broke. Uh, <laughs> mid-intro, <laughs> so Sorry. she's going to sound a little different. We just want to acknowledge that <laughs> in case you're like a real audiophile and you're like, hmm, something's up here. Um, <laughs> Something is a mess. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what your submissions would be, John and Brianna, as a city slogan. Um, 
I would like to share. I, I came up with a couple. If that's Ooh, okay. Because okay. I got very inspired and excited. Okay. Portland. Our haters make us famous. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Portland. We'll probably figure it out. Uh, <laughs> but this one's my favorite. This one's my okay. favorite. Portland. It's better where it's wetter. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, I like that. You know, I can see, you know, our like city water department <laughs> yes. really embracing that slogan. Yes. It's better where it's wetter. Department of water. <laughs> yeah. What about you, John? Oh my gosh. I feel like I've spent so much time thinking about other people's slogans from all the submissions that we got that I'm just mm -hmm. kind of drawing a blank on what the city slogan should be. And the thing that's sticking in my mind, Claudia, at one point forever ago, we were coming up with the name for a Portland baseball team. And I came yes. up with the Portland Mud Puddles. Yeah. <laughs> and that is all my brain can think of right now for some reason. So I'm just going with Portland, the city of mud puddles. That is I love it. what I think our slogan should be. Because I think it'd be really cute. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cute. Oh, my God. I came up with uh, Portland, don't read the comments, Brianna, which is oh. kind of close to yours. And it actually gained some traction on our Instagram page. So I was really excited about that. That's fabulous. That's a good one. I love yeah. it. We, we got so many good ones. I mean, I, I want to just like go through some of my favorite like B-sides that didn't make the final list, if that's OK. Yeah, let's do it. Um, we got this one, City of Beauty, Resilience and Grit. That was mm. from uh, Fancy Climas which I thought was just such a beautiful summation of Portland and like allowing all of it to like be a part of what we are. Um, and another reader slash listener reached out with beer in hand, love in heart, which is just like Aww. also very sweet. And I think gets to the core of who we are as Portlanders. Yeah, definitely a good bumper sticker. So I really liked um, Rip City. Remixing the narrative. Nice. Reggie Walker's contribution there. Mm -hmm. And I also like this anonymous contribution. Portland, your microdose of a city. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like Portland, Seattle's dirty little sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also fancy climbers. Um, and I love this one. This was sweet, anonymous. The city that blooms and grows. Yeah. Oh, that oh, one's great too. I know. Really pretty. Although when I read that one originally, I thought it was referencing algae blooms. So that <laughs> <laughs> also very <Yeah>. Portland. <laughs> very. Well, thank you, you guys, for going through some of the city slogans with me. Thank you to everyone who submitted a city slogan. Uh, I hope that we're all pleased with the city that's working on it. I think that it really does encompass that we are. And we're trying real hard. All right. On to the news of the week. Brianna, what did you bring us? I am bringing some darling news, courtesy of Dylan Rivera at the uh, Portland Bureau of Transportation. So the 2023 Portland Bicycle Counts report was just released. And um, this is a report on the biking habits of Portlanders. And it's the result of data collected by 114 volunteers. I think that's kind of cute. Portland News, all of these volunteers, gathering mm -hmm. counts of people biking at 272 locations citywide at peak riding times. And the, the good news is that Portland has shown a 5% increase in biking in 2023 uh, compared with the year before, which we're already a city known for being remarkably bike friendly. So, you know, you kind of thinking like, oh, wow, five whole percent. But that is a very impressive number. Because we are so we are such fervent bikers anyway. Okay, mm -hmm. so some highlights from this report: uh, every part of Portland showing an increase. Notably, Northwest Portland had an increase of fifteen percent. Good for you guys. <laughs> then, for the first time, this report is including e-bike use, and they're estimating that seventeen percent of all of the bike trips on Portland were on e-bikes. Four and a half of percent of everyone counted uh, were riding an e-scooter. So in East Portland, about ten percent of the people counted. We're riding an e-scooter. That's the highest share in any sector. East Portland, just scooting. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brianna. <laughs> Go on. Slogans for all the quadrants. East Portland, still scooting. Um, I do want to say this report was released in March. So a lot of like transpo people are already just like, I know, but we wanted to <laughs> highlight it <laughs> because it's a big deal. And also um, we did have a drop 
in biking in Portland. They blamed it on the pandemic because people stopped commuting to work. So this just shows that we're on the up and up. And so I'm excited to find out what the numbers will be in 2024. I'm hoping 10%. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping 15. Me. All right. Okay. Well, three are going to win that round. <laughs> uh, and, and something else to flag on top of this that is just coming out this week. I just saw this story from the Street Trust of Portland. They are expanding the Ride to Own program. Do you guys know about this? No, tell me. So this is a pilot program that they started in partnership with We All Rise. Uh, it's funded through the DEQ Oregon Clean Fuels program. But basically... It is giving people their own electric bike at no cost. Um, It's a pilot program. It's already been running up in Portsmouth in North Portland. This weekend, they're expanding it to three different communities, Hillsborough, Milwaukee, and the Park Rose neighborhood in Portland. Nice. Um, and, and basically, like as long as you have less than the median household income, you are eligible for this pilot program. And like, you know, the median income for a single person is around 80 grand. So a lot of people are going to qualify for this. It's, it's really, really cool. It's not a ton of bikes, but like, they're really just like gathering data to hopefully scale this across the region of this program to provide this like super, super essential mobility tool uh, for people that don't have it. And if you're like into it, they are having a ride to own uh, expansion kickoff this Saturday at the Milwaukee City Hall at 2 p.m. So, nice. yeah, bike nerds, uh, get out there. It's going to be really cool. I'm still stuck on the medium income for a single person being eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, like what? Are you sure it wasn't <laughs> that, like a household? Yeah. It was a single, a single person. Single person, eighty thousand or less. Household of four, <laughs> one hundred fourteen thousand or less. Yeah, yeah. You know, median, not average or middle. You know, so like. When people make a ton of money, the median goes up. But yeah, yeah, that's that's more than I thought it would be, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all. Well, Brianna, before I wrap it up, do you have anything to say? I recently auditioned an e-bike, and I do just want to say that that shit was amazing, and I highly recommend it. Because <laughs> I used to bike, like, analog bike. It's really fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you, I feel like I can never go back to analog biking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Analog biking. I love this term. I'm sorry. Yeah. Copyright 2024 Brianna Wheeler. Analog <laughs> biking. Acoustic biking, I believe. Is the... Acoustic biking. I only bike on vinyl. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a quick break here. And when we come back, more headlines of the week. Have you ever wished you could just go somewhere and decorate cakes? If you're nodding your head right now, well, Cake Hoopla has got you covered. A do-it-yourself cake and cupcake decorating studio in Tiger, they supply you with everything needed, including the baked cakes and cupcakes, and the frosting, the fondant, the sprinkles, tools, and even instructions if you're going for something a bit more highfalutin. You can join workshops, book private parties, or order kits to take home. No matter the skill level, Cake Hoopla has something for everyone. They even offer customizable packages for any kind of party. Kids, birthdays, Days, company events, bridal showers, holiday parties, team building, you get it. Customers can also book a table, the party room, the whole studio, or just choose a pickup option. For more info, head over to Cake Hoopla in Tiger just off I-5 or go to cakehoopla.com. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Okay, John, what are you looking at this week? I'm talking about cannabis. Um, I feel funny being the the cannabis news story person with an actual cannabis reporter in the round table. Uh, but <laughs> y- yeah, I mean, the big news. <laughs> Sorry for you. I was like, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you know the big news this week. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration is really looking at Uh, rescheduling cannabis federally. It would mean that the Justice Department would 
officially like recognized medical use of cannabis and reschedule it from a schedule one drug, which is like the big, scary, super dangerous drugs like heroin, to a schedule three drug that includes things like ketamine or anabolic steroids, things that are controlled substances, but also have um, medicinal use. And, you know, like we've already decriminalized it at a state level, but this is a really big deal uh, for a lot of different people who are involved in the Oregon cannabis industry, uh, for producers, for potential research applications here in Oregon. Um, you know, it isn't the full legalization that a lot of advocates, including some of our ranking lawmakers, want, uh, but it's a big deal, and it's a good news for um, a lot of people that are involved in cannabis. What do you think, Brianna? What did I miss? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing news, Obvs. And for Oregon in particular, it starts the conversation of interstate commerce. Mm -hmm. Because we are prolific producers of cannabis. And uh, I mean, as evidenced by, you know, the $2 joints and the dollar grams that you can buy everywhere, it's great weed. So this could be a boon for our economy. Uh, but, you know, baby steps still, uh, just because it's rescheduled doesn't necessarily mean that we're doing interstate commerce. But that conversation can finally begin in earnest. So that's mm -hmm. super exciting for the state. Yeah, I was going to ask Brianna if any of this would help our hurting local cannabis industry like immediately. Or do we need to uh, wait for federal legalization in order to have this what you were just describing this, you know, interstate yeah. commerce? Yeah. Well, if we're having a conversation about medicinal cannabis, that's a different conversation. Oh, the, I see what you're saying. Okay. You know what I mean? In the conversation mm -hmm. about interstate um, commerce. Either way, we are super experts on both of those. So um, we will be at the forefront of that conversation regardless. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, as far as how that is going to affect our industry here, I'm not sure that we're going to see trickle down effects of that. Our weed's going to still be super fucking cheap. Except maybe, you know, you don't have to sweat so much about taking a couple of joints on an airplane. Don't quote me on that. I'm not, I might be talking out of my neck. <laughs> Do not quote <laughs> Brianna on that, people. I'm just imagining the TSA agent where somebody's like, well, I heard this podcast. <laughs> oh, Brianna Cast. Wheeler has said. <laughs> Very official CityCast <laughs> podcast. Um, John, U.S. Representative Earl Blumenauer what did he have to say about this? Because we had him on the show and we know he spent the last three decades like hoping to accomplish any part of this. Like, how yeah. is he reacting? Yeah, I mean, he was right out there immediately, even before this was confirmed, when it was just a sort of like, we think that the USDA is going to be looking at this. He was right out there with a statement. Uh, this is what he said. If today's reporting proves true... We will be one step closer to ending the failed war on drugs. Marijuana was scheduled more than 50 years ago based on stigma, not science. The American people have made it clear in state after state, cannabis legalization is inevitable. The Biden-Harris administration is listening. So he was just like, hell yeah, immediately. Um, Ron mm -hmm. Wyden, our, our senator, was right out there with a statement too. Ronnie! Yeah, Ronnie. <laughs> um, and, and, and he pointed out that this is going to change the way that it's taxed as well, mm. which could make a big oh. difference for producers. There's this thing yeah. called U.S. Code 280E. It's a tax measure that is largely reserved for like, you know, banning most deductions from drug traffickers. It's a super punitive tax as it gets rescheduled, the producers are not going to have to pay under that tax structure, which is a big deal because, like, the effective rate for some cannabis companies is, like, 80% of gross revenue. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that could make a big difference for, like, the profitability of, like, all these companies in Oregon that are, like, producing a ton of cannabis but having a hard time turning a profit right now. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. that also, like, it would bring pharmaceutical companies to Oregon, right? Like, it, it would bring a boom of new business. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's this, what they're predicting, right? This was something they were talking about at OPB. Jeff Norcross there did a great interview about this. That like, yeah, part of the problem is like, we kind of know that like there's all these great medicinal uses for cannabis, but it's really hard to get that research done because of the way that it's scheduled at a federal le oh, level. So like yeah. this is going to make it real easy to like 
actually put real science behind this shit as opposed to what I think is happening at this point where like people kind of like have the hunch and know that there's good health benefits to using it for a lot of people, but the research just hasn't been able to be done in the same way. And people are saying that Oregon could be a real leader in that as well. I just saw the test results and it's like, it gets you high. (laughs) I was like, oh, no way. (laughs) Panel of high schoolers have determined it makes snacks tasty. I know, exactly. (laughs) And follow up, but does it make vegetables taste good? You know, (laughs) just like, um, wow. No, that actually, that's really exciting. Yeah. Well, thanks, John. Um, No problem. Before I move on, Brianna, did you have anything to say? Just yay, weed. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yay. Oh, cannabis eternal cheerleader, Brianna. <laughs> Give me a cheerleader outfit. I will wear that shit proudly. All right. So what I'm looking into this week is the possibility of everyday Portlanders having a direct say with how roughly 2% of the city's budget gets spent each year. And I read uh, an article written by Portland Mercury's Taylor Griggs. Now, you might have already heard Uh, murmurs about this because a participatory budgeting campaign is currently gathering signatures for a November ballot initiative. Now, if passed, advocates say that city spending would be more reflective of like community needs and, and the process would get more people for from like more walks of life involved in local politics. And just to put the amount of money I'm talking about into perspective, if we use this year's city budget as a reference, Roughly 2% of the city's annual discretionary budget, which is where the money would come from, is about $15 million a year. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a lot of potatoes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, a lot of tater tots. That's a lot of tater tots. <laughs> so $15 million uh, for all of us Portlanders to spend on community projects that are needed that like get stuck at City Hall, you know? And just, you know, this isn't some like wacky Portland idea. Similar plans have been adopted in thousands of cities around the world, including New York City, Seattle, Chicago, and Barcelona. That was one of my Googles. It was like Barcelona. And I was like, fuck you, Barcelona. Anyhow, tried and <laughs> <laughs> sorry, the Mexican came out. Sorry, go back in. Um, tried and <laughs> tried and tested. You know, this is a real thing that happens, and it and it happens. Um with the participation of the community, there's checks and balances, you know, like I was curious also on the kind of projects some of these cities had spent their participatory budget funds on. And here are some examples. New York City spent it on air conditioning for public schools, improved public transportation. They were creating more accessible bathrooms. They upgraded and expanded green spaces. And in Seattle, they uh, they basically funded their own version of Portland Street Response. Imagine that. Oh, money love that. <laughs> and money for <laughs> for programs that all of us are like, please fund. And city halls just like, I we just don't know how. You know? <laughs> so, oh my god! It's important to note that this would be divided by like districts. You know, mm-hmm. so that's how they divide these funds. So it's not just like oh, it all goes to northwest or you know, or it all goes to the east. Like, so. Pretty soon we're going to have that. We're going to have some districts. So this kind of falls in line with how our city government is shaking out. But before I share even more details on how all of this would work in Portland, like, what do you guys think? I think this is a great idea. And I think what you're saying about, you know, combining this with district leadership at the same time is super, super smart, you know? Um, I mean, because think about the process that most people need to go through to, like, enact change in city government. It's really hard and it's really arduous and it requires a lot of, like, procedural stuff and attending meetings and, like, knowing how to get in to pull the levers of government, which Mm -hmm. inherently are just going to be easier to access by people who are more affluent and who have the sort of time and invested interest to get their interests through. Um, yeah. So that's my sort of like good governance pitch on it. My my other thought is like, we we so often talk about government as like, oh, we need more money. We need like, we're like in a, a mode of having to cut. And, and I kind of like the idea of a little treat fund. You know, I'm just being like, <laughs> every, 
<laughs> Everyone gets a little treat. Like your neighborhood gets a little treat. Like what do you like? You know, it's not the most important thing, I'm maybe. Sorry. But ACs like ACs for public schools. We get a little. We get a little <laughs> treat in uh, Southwest. You get a little treat in North Portland. Oh I, that's God. that's how I like to imagine it, and that's made me really happy. I'm just feeling like, ooh, we get a little 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 bonus <laughs> for the neighborhood. Oh my God, I love it. What about you, Brianna? <laughs> I am. Very excited to see how this shakes out. Also, I agree with you, John. It's shades of new Portland. Like Portland has been in this kind of transitional phase. What are we doing? Where are we going? We will have a new government. We will have this new uh, little treat fund. So, I mean, it feels like it's a whole new landscape for Portland. This is a, a wonderful perk of that whole new landscape. And I, yeah. I wonder what kind of treat my neighborhood's going to get. <laughs> uh, yeah. Everyone think about it. I will get back to you because I'm going to tell you some stuff first. So, <laughs> so no, think about the little treat that you want. John, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave St. John's up to you. Okay. Okay. So my main concern when I heard this was like, oh, yeah, let's give $15 million like to, to people. I, and, you know, just like the... Uh -huh kind of pessimistic person was just like, we can't handle it. But then I'm just like, wait, <laughs> who is city council? They're people. <laughs> like, how is that, you know, any better than like what we would come up with? So yeah, I was concerned about like not having checks and balances, but according to the plan, there would be like a community guided budget process and it would have the same accountability as like city hall's budget. So it would be mm -hmm. subject to like evaluation from like a steering committee and the city's auditor's office to ensure it's effective and transparent for for everyone. And and I was like, yeah, that's what we need. So here's like the rundown of how it would work. So it's be guided by the steering committee made up of residents from each of the, like our districts. Ideas would be collected, there would be a voting process. Um, and then the the project that got the most votes gets funded. Like it just it's so simple <laughs> when you break it down. You're just like it, as opposed to just like, let's wait for, you know, good old Frank to finish his speech on like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like <laughs> on why he doesn't want birds hanging out on his yard. You know what I mean? Like you're just like, no, no, it's just like this is bing, bang, boom. We're just going to do this, mm -hmm. you know. OK, John, I'm curious, Brianna, what would your little treats be? <laughs> Maybe this is not so little, but I want a Ferris wheel. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Mine is also totally impractical as well. Proving this all <laughs> ridiculous. All right, you want Brianna wants a Ferris wheel. Go on. Where yes. would it go? Um, it would go in a park. Okay. Or in an intersection. Um, <laughs> Just right in an intersection. <laughs> right, right in a roundabout. Yes. Yes. Okay. It would be in a rose garden roundabout. <laughs> Ferris wheel. And then the parks department can run it. You know, just oh, send somebody yeah. from the parks department over to press the button, and you know, we have Ferris wheel. Boom! That, that sounds delightful. Yeah, I'll vote for that. Free for the children. <laughs> what about you, John? Uh, so my mine is practical. I'm just interested in transit. I think that from the top of the St. John's Bridge, we should have a zip line to Big Pink. <laughs> oh, that's so smart. <laughs> Oh, man. Seems totally practical to me. <laughs> Here, I'm setting oh this God. up as like a real valid option. And you two, you two clowns. <laughs> you got us dreaming, Claudia. Fueling, I'm sorry. Fueling all the naysayers are like, and this is the clownery I'm talking about. Um, but I will say that in the cities that have enacted this, they saw a rise in engagement with like, you know, John was saying like mm -hmm. everyday Portlanders because mm -hmm. imagine like living in the edge of Gresham and like trying to drive downtown in your lunchtime to like say your piece about something. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. It's not going to happen for you, you know? Um, so this is better. This is just better. And I'm really excited about it. I hope that it does pass. This ballot initiative would need 40,748 signatures to be exact uh, by July 5th to earn a place, you know, in, in next November's ballot. So if it does and the voters say yes, Portland could have this budgeting system in place by 2027. That could be really cool. Yeah. I don't know. Let's spend that money. Get those designs ready for that Ferris wheel. Brianna. Okay, who wants to be a carny? <laughs> who wants to be a clown? I love that it has already expanded into an entire circus now. <laughs> Bring back old Portland. I'm just seeing like that guy riding that one-wheeled bicycle just around and round the roundabout while the Ferris wheel goes. The unicycle? 
Oh, what did it say? One wheeled one bicycle. You're like, is it a unicycle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a unicycle. <laughs> People knew what I meant. I'm like, wait, does that have a name? <laughs> Does, dude. Don't I totally we have a celebrity forgot. that rides one of those? I Doesn't one of our like bro. esteemed local celebrities <laughs> ride a one wheeled bicycle? I thought it was because he had one bagpipe. <laughs> <laughs> thought it was the pipe. Oh man! All right, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for going through some positive news this week. I'm thinking it's all bangers. We're getting more greenways. We're getting more support for our industry and. I don't know. We might be getting a Ferris wheel, it seems. <laughs> and or a zip line. <laughs> the, the future is bright. So here's my new slogan for Portland. Portland, okay. the future is bright, but then it's going to be like a zip line sound. So it's like, Portland, the future is bright. <laughs> we haven't had one of John's random <laughs> sound effects in so long and I'm so glad this is the episode you decided to unleash that one it is a 503 day gift for all of you <laughs> all right. well thanks John thank you Brianna thank you and thank you everyone for listening yeah thank you Claudia this was fun We reached out to Jonathan Moss, editor of Bike Portland, to see if he had any updates on Brianna's story, and he didn't, but he did share what he was excited about in Portland's transportation scene. One is our upcoming change in government, as it means there will be no more commissioners all up in Peabot's business. He also noted that this week, a bunch of city employees led by Peabot organized a morning bike bus ride to the Portland Municipal Services Building, and he wrote, that was really cool to see, and that's the kind of swagger I love to see more from them going forward. He also wanted us to shout out Bike Loud PDX, Pedal Palooza, and Bike Portland's own weekly bike happy hour, which is every Wednesday from 3 to 6 p.m. at Southeast Ankeny Rainbow Road between 27th and 28th. So thank you to Jonathan Moss and all the grassroots volunteers in the biking community for making Portland a better and safer city to ride in. That's all for today here on CityCast Portland. Thanks so much for listening. Our executive producer is John Atariani. Our producers this week were Lizzie Goldsmith and Julia Fiaioni. Our newsletter editor is Rachel Monahan, And our host is me, Claudia Meza. Original music by Jenny Conley and Stephen Drizos. Additional music by Epidemic Sound and All the Kimonos. We'll be back Monday morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's. Slim's.